Hey everybody, it's Chief Meteorologist Brian Petovich here with an update on Debbie. I know it seems like we talk about Debbie forever. It definitely feels like to me uh, the storm is barely moving. Um, what we're tracking is both the storm, but honestly, the biggest thing I'm tracking, and I've been talking about this last couple of days, the center's down here. It's probably just about offshore of Georgetown. But what I'm really tracking is this heavy rain band. Where does this go? Think of this thing as a giant gear or wheel. Um, and in the north, northwest side is where the heaviest rain is in this system. And as this center tracks up here, it's going to force this, you know, big, I'd call them fire hose, actually, of moisture back into the Charlotte area. And that's that's the growing concern tonight and tomorrow. And, and it's just not me because you look at where this band is, and I'm going to show you a couple things. I'm going to focus in. Uh, you see where this band is? All those green areas, those are flash flood warnings. And again, I, that's not even doing justice to the, the radar. Um, if we zoom in on the radar here, you see that band pretty much everywhere in that band where it is right now, um, widespread flash flooding. So that's heading towards Chesterfield, Richmond, and Anson County tonight. It's going to take a while to get here. It's not going to happen now. It's not going to happen by midnight. It's going to happen tomorrow morning throughout the day as it moves in. The reason there's so much moisture this is a tropical system there was dry air wrapping around it last night but as you can see today um the moisture has kind of gotten it you know all the way back in there i mean that is just absolutely tropical and there's this fire hose coming in here so tomorrow into the afternoon and evening you see that precipitation just parked over us now the the flood watch has been extended a little bit back to the west we talked about this earlier uh, many areas east were under the flood watch but there's only four counties in our area not under the watch right now so it's actually been expanded back to the west quite a bit but when we look at the areas that are going to be most impacted by the heaviest rain that's a look uh through tonight roughly about two o'clock in the morning um as we go into tomorrow this is the updated uh, excessive rainfall outlook and you can see um man this is a huge excessive area through greensboro southern pines rockingham but almost our entire area all these cities um Taylorsville, Statesville, Mooresville, Salisbury, Kannapolis, Concord, Fort Mill, Rock Hill, TKK, Belmont, Mount Holly. I mean, all these areas are under the high risk. I mean, we don't, we're not under high risk for flash flooding very often. Um, so this is a lot of rain in a short, short period of time. And how much rain are we talking about? Well, I, I posted this map on and off throughout the last couple of days as things have changed, they're ebbed and flowed. We're in that four to six inch range for most of our area. Um, so four to six inches. Now, this says seven days, I know at the top, but this is all gonna fall <laughs> basically between now and Friday morning. And a lot of this will fall in a 12 hour window. So four to six inches, I know, ah, no big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. It's like two months of rain in 12 hours. If that happens in that rain band, we're gonna see flash flooding, no matter you know what anybody out there thinks. So the updated timing, this is the more detailed timing graphic I wanted to share with you. I will move my big head out of the way here. We'll try to slide it down here all the way in the corner. But you get the idea here. Tomorrow morning um, after 2, but really rush hour time frame, middle of the day until 6 p.m., 6 p.m. and after. So if you were to ask me what's the worst 12-hour window, I'd say 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., somewhere in that time frame, plus or minus a couple hours. So, um, you know, in rain is the biggest threat but then the winds could be an issue um, coupled with the heavy rain that typically causes some issues not you know normally i would not worry about um, sorry i moved the whole map on you normally i would not worry too much about this wind speed if it was just a sunny breezy day probably wouldn't have any issues but when you saturate the ground like we're going to do tomorrow probably going to get some trees down and power outages are incredibly difficult to forecast because it all depends on where the tree is that falls on that power line, right? Um, it's not like uh, the winds are high enough just to break poles on their own. These will be trees into power lines and poles. And because I don't know where all those are, it's hard to say. I mean, you take one tree on a, on a given day and it hits the wrong power line, you got big time issues. So this is our late, latest feature cast. You see that heavy rain band? It's slow to move in, but that's also the problem. You know, it's a twofold th issue. It's like, it's not here yet, Brad, it's not here yet. Yeah, because it's moving so slow, but that's also the negative that once it gets here, guess what it's going to do? It's going to sit over us for a while. So um, as slow as it's moving, I actually would love to see it moving quicker because that would tell me the thing is moving. When it's moving this slow, um, it's going to sit over. So you see it starting in the morning 
and just sitting there wave after wave of rain and again this probably doesn't do justice to what the radar is actually going to you know show you because the radar might have a tough time making this look impressive because think about tropical systems sometimes on radar they don't look as heavy as big thunderstorms but because of the process we call it a warm rain process going on in the in the cloud um, it doesn't reflect the radar as easily but it's producing more rain if that makes sense there's more water droplets they tend to be somewhat smaller in these setups and so the re radar reflectivity isn't as bright but there's more raindrops so it ends up being more rain so I've seen this in a lot of tropical systems. It looks like it's light to moderate rain, and all of a sudden you just see flooding everywhere because it just starts piling up. So those are the wind speeds, maybe topping out around 35, 40 miles per hour. Um, so tomorrow's a washout. I mean, there's just no, no other way. Tomorrow's about as washout a day as you're gonna get. Rains all day, but by evening starts to move out. Um, the winds calm down. And again, if you want to factor and see like what's gonna happen tomorrow, once we see the wind shift to the southwest, that's a good sign. That means the storm has passed us or even the west. If the winds are out of the northeast, that means the storm is still over us like this. That means we've got north northeast winds. The storm is still heading our way. The wind has to shift and that tells you the low has passed you. Also, if you see the pressure fall, you can look at this on your phone, not a phone app. Um, like a weather app. I'm talking about actually access the barometer in your phone with an app and you can measure the barometer going up and down. If it's going up, the storm's past you. If it's going down, the storm's still heading your way. So real quickly, just to, just to give you an hourly forecast tomorrow, because I think this tells you a lot about tomorrow's forecast. Um, it's not often. I, I can't remember the last time that I honestly had a hundred percent chance of rain for a 12 hour period like this. Um, and look at the temperatures, 70s because of the cloud cover, and look at the winds, northeast. Uh, those are sustained. So sustained winds about 15 to 20, gusts to 30. So be safe out there. It's a day to stay weather aware. The biggest thing you could do tomorrow is, you know, I, I'm going to drive. I got to go to work, but don't drive into flooded roads. Take it easy. Turn your lights on. If your wipers are on, lights on. Do not use your hazards. I don't want to get into that again. Hazards don't help anybody. They don't. Unless you're pulled over or broken down. Don't drive with your hazards. It just confuses everybody. Um, just turn your lights on. That's what you need. Lights and wipers and slow it down. Avoid flooded roadways and possible power outages. So charge things up just in case. Have the battery packs. Charge everything up. Plug it in. Just be ready for some flash flood warnings tomorrow. Of course, we'll have updates tonight at 11. I will post updates tomorrow morning as the rain falls. We'll do a vlog in the morning, uh, depending on what time I get up. And I'll be here all morning and probably afternoon tomorrow. Um, posting updates. I'll be at the station probably early two o'clock in the afternoon and we'll have a, our morning show starting early tomorrow too at 4 a.m. to get you ready for this. So be safe out there. We'll get through it. Um, it is a big deal for some of us. They get the flooding, but by Friday, Saturday, no issues. The weekend's great. So travel away. I don't expect many travel issues tomorrow from planes because it's rain and wind. It's not thunderstorms. Thunderstorms are 100 times worse. Um, doesn't mean there won't be delays for other reasons or just delays in general, um, but it's not going to be a significant impact uh, on air travel. I think tomorrow that will probably, you know, be more of a mechanical issue or something else. There's always just check with your airline. I I never know with the airlines. It's I hate forecasting or, or trying it because I don't know. I just know the weather. <laughs> and so I can tell you in my experience, this weather doesn't cause many issues, but other things do. So have a safe night. and I'll see you tonight at 11 after the Olympics.